Hi, welcome to oh, oh. using DevSpace to usher in an era of peace for our developers. My name is Raj Siman Ravichandran, in short, Raj. I'm a software engineer that specializes in cloud computing. I started my career as a site reliability engineer where I managed Kubernetes cl clusters and ensured the readiness of the systems. And then I slowly pivoted towards developer experience. I'm here to talk about the developer experience journey and how we improved them uh, last year at my previous company. So these are the following developer challenges that I'll be talking about uh, uh, in this session. And we really got to know about the, these developer challenges by talking to the developers, uh, getting and putting out uh, surveys in our organization, trying to get the results uh, regarding how they feel about our development uh, clusters. And we really try to understand from their point of view. And I've marked them over a happiness over time graph so that we can showcase uh, the developer experience journey and how we uh, address each of these point points and how it changes over time. So starting from the top, uh, we have shared development environment in our cluster. And that makes it really painful for our developers to test their changes in the environment. They also face the problems with local environment setup hassles uh, that they have to do a lot of uh, complex setting up of their tools and packages to get things started in their local environment. Combined with those two pain points, uh, they, end, they end up taking a longer cycle time to develop, test, uh, and uh, push, push code to production. And finally, they also tend to face a lot of uh, problems with setting up the environment for running end-to-end -end tests in our system. Now, quick show of hands, how many of you have faced one or more of these problems at your organization? <laughs> it's good to know that. Um, so uh, let, let's start off with uh, the, start of the first pain point of our environment of shared development cluster. And before I start off with that, I want to give a brief background of our developer environment. So we have our Kubernetes development cluster that uh, run, runs on Kubernetes. And our development cluster is shared with 100 developers uh, in our organization. And we have main or core services that are deployed on one namespace in our development cluster that says core namespace and uh, their name serves A, B, and C. They are core services that power our main applications and, they, and most if not all the developers use uh, these services in their day-to-day -day work. And there are also other non-critical uh, and non-core services that are deployed in other namespaces. Now, taking a deeper dive on the core namespace, we have the services deployed as Kubernetes deployments, and they use the main branch for stability reasons. And we have a Kubernetes ingress, uh, which has the endpoints dev cluster slash SVC A, B, and C, and that's what developers use to access the services. And with that being said, uh, Let's say let's let's take a scenario where a developer wants to deploy a test branch uh, on this development cluster. Um, a developer deploys on say service C. They deploy a test branch, but since test branch is not uh, stable, it's uh, it breaks the service C, and it becomes unavailable not just for one developer but all the developers in our organization, and. As you can see, as you can imagine, that caused a lot of friction with all the developers in our organization. Uh, one of the solutions that our developers came up with was uh, to use Google Calendars. <laughs> they, would, they would simply create a, a, a time slot just for themselves for the entire development cluster, and they would test the changes. And developers uh, would often they, they may override deployments or they may not follow this Google Calendar, they might forget, and they might override the deployments. And that really causes a lot of friction in our development cluster. And the developer experience team took a look at that and we felt like 
what is going on with this Google Calendar? <laughs> and we, uh, we took a look, we talked with the developers, we understood their pain points, what their expectations, what their needs were, and we looked at potential solutions, and we came across DevSpace. Quick show of hands, does anyone know about uh, DevSpace? Cool, quite a bit, that's good. I'll give a brief overview of uh, DevSpace. So DevSpace is a CNCO project created by Loft Labs. It's an open source tool. And it, it can be considered, like a good analogy would be, uh, it's a Docker Compose for Kubernetes. Essentially, it's a command line tool that allows you to develop and deploy applications on Kubernetes clusters. It provides a lot of functionalities, functionalities like abstracting the Kubernetes uh, commands for example, port forwarding, logging, um, really abstracts a lot of Kubernetes uh, functionality such that developers don't need to remember those Kubernetes commands that runs underneath the hood. They, they would simply use DevSpace command uh, uh, to uh, use port forwarding or logging or any other functionalities that they would do, use it in their day-to-day -day work. So that really reduces the cognitive overload for their developers. So in this diagram, we have a desk, uh, say a dev space configuration. The command line tool will simply build the image and deploy uh, to the development cluster using Helm or kubectl. Now, how do we use dev, dev space to address our shared development environment problem? We implemented something called de dedicated ephemeral testing environments using a feature of dev space called dev space deploy. Uh, where the developer will simply create a unique namespace for themselves on the development cluster and deploy their changes on that environment. And we, we implemented uh, DevSpace Deploy for our core services. And DevSpace Deploy also has a dependency feature such that the de developers can deploy multiple services uh, you, uh, such that they can simply uh, use it on one uh, repository and use dependency feature to deploy multiple services rather than going to different services and deploying it. So here a developer would simply use, would simply clone the repository, create a unique namespace using create space and simply run the command test space deploy uh, to test their branch. So let's revisit the uh, scenario where uh, a, de a developer deploys uh, service B and C on a unique namespace. They would create uh, a namespace, say, dev developer X, and they would deploy their branch, dev X branch, on service B, uh, and they use dependency feature to deploy service C as well. Uh, they also get the, a unique ingress object, which is dev X dot dev cluster slash SVC B and C so that they can access that you, their environment using that object. And they can share that URL with other developers as well for collaboration purposes. In hindsight, we pretty much uh, created a way for each developer to create their own namespaces and deploy their own changes. So they're not stepping over each other or de overriding deployments on the development cluster. So what does that bring, bring us? Uh, so one of the main benefits is no more use of Google calendars. Nobody needs to block off time slots for accessing the development cluster. It also brings uh, better visibility. Each, uh, as I mentioned, like each uh, developer would get a unique name, uh, unique ingress object, unique URL, and they can share that to, and collaborate with other developers. At the end of the day, uh, this, this makes it a happy environment. Uh, it's not a conflict ridden. It, uh, no, uh, all the developers are working on the same development cluster and they can use it at, they can deploy their changes at their own time and at their own pace. So we address the shared uh, development environment with DevSpace Deploy and developers are becoming happy. So the next up is uh, the local uh, setup hassles. So let's take a scenario where a new developer joins uh, our company. Uh, they get a new laptop. They are itching to start to develop, uh, start to uh, write code. But before they do that, they need to first set up tools 
say Docker, AWS CLI, a lot of command line tools. They need to set up packages, uh, write versions of the packages like Python, pip, Flask, and they may need to set up uh, more than one service. They, if they're setting up uh, services locally, they may need to repeat the same steps of installing tools and packages for those specific services. And after a period of time, they may need to do this again if they're changing laptops, if they're changing the local environment. And that's a very painful procedure. So, and we also find a few challenges with that. One of them is when you're hosting uh, yeah, the local services locally, we have a high resource usage. Some of the services, they may use more memory or CPU, and so there's just resource contention in that local environment. There's also a challenge of outdated documentation. Say we have a new service that's deployed, we have documentation for, in, uh, for installing tools and packages, but as time uh, progresses, tools change, packages change, but the, uh, but the doc documentation does not get updated. Then the new developer joins the company, they uh, look at the outdated documentation, local uh, services are not coming up, they ask other developers, time is wasted, resources are wasted. And so that's, that's one of the main challenges as well. And, I, and we also found this, uh, the, this challenge of works on my environment syndrome. What I mean by that is when they have a local setup uh, running, they have a local service running on their laptop, they start developing, things are work, working great on the laptop, but when they deploy it on the Kubernetes environment, things break. Everything seemed to have worked on my environment that's what they always say. That's why we named the syndrome. So there's a drift or there's, there's a difference between a local environment and the production environment or development cluster. So again, the developer experience team had a look at that. We saw that pain point and we wanted to address that pain point. And what we found out is that DevSpace has another feature called DevSpace development mode where it allows it to uh, deploy remote development mode environment on the Kubernetes cluster using the command space dev. So when a new developer types in the command space dev on the local environment, what that does is that it deploys the service on the Kubernetes environment and it connects that service uh, in the Kubernetes environment to the local environment such that any changes that made locally will be synced to the service in the, in, the, in the Kubernetes cluster. And you can see the changes in near real time using the URL uh, devx.devcluster slash svcc in this example. So they create a unique environment and they deploy, and they deploy the service on the Kubernetes cluster and they can uh, sync the uh, local changes to the Kubernetes cluster. And it automatically hot reloads the service. We can also uh, connect the integrated development environment, uh, like an ID uh, using uh, such as VS Code, with remote debuggers such that you can insert breakpoints and endpoints on the Kubernetes environment. So again, very similar procedure. Uh, a, de a developer would simply clone the repository, create a unique namespace for themselves, and, de uh, and use DevSpace Dev to re deploy a remote development environment. So, what are the benefits? One, we don't need to set up tools, packages, or services on the local environment. We are developing on a production-like cluster. So no need for local de uh, development. This also brings us low resource usage because none of the, uh, we're not hosting any services locally. And it also provides easier onboarding. Uh, when a developer gets, uh, joins a new company, they simply need to install DevSpace and they will run the command DevSpace Dev and start in, uh, running tool, like installing tools or packages or all sorts of services to set up their local environment. So coming back to the developer experience journey, uh, local setup hassles is addressed using uh, DevSpace Dev. Now, we made some improvements and definitely uh, the cycle time would be shorter but we wanted to take it a step further. How can we use these building blocks to make the cycle time even shorter? And 
the way we did it was to bring DevSpace deployments to our CI, uh, our continuous integration workflow. So essentially what we do is that for each pull request, we would deploy DevSpace uh, environments. We deploy we, and then uh, provide that unique environment for the developer on the workflow. So uh, let's start with an example. Say a developer, uh, they, would, they, they want to start developing. They clone the repository, create a test branch, uh, develop using the DevSpace dev feature. And once everything uh, looks, looks, looks good, they would create a PR. Once they create a pull request, they simply type in the command slash DevSpace deploy on the PR comment. And that kicks off GitHub Actions that we created, uh, DevSpace deployed GitHub Actions. And what that essentially does is that it creates a DevSpace environment for that pull request, uh, in, uh, deploys the changes for in that uh, pull request into the, into the unique DevSpace environment. And here we use uh, the ingress object uh, the URL, repo hyphen PR number, dot dev cluster slash uh, SVC ANC. We also uh, collaborate with our developers uh, such that they want to deploy multiple services on the environment. So one of the conventions we used is that we look for the same branch name as the one created for the PR. We look on different services. If a branch name exists, we would deploy that uh, service on this developer environment as well. So for example, service C if, uh, is, is being deployed in this environment. And you, uh, developers can use this URL to collaborate with other developers. They can uh, review, uh, review with other developers. They can, uh, and if, if, if it's not good, they will probably go back to the DevSpace dev, uh, develop, uh, make some changes, redeploy their changes to the uh, GitHub Actions, and then uh, deployed on the DevSpace environment, and then they continue testing as well. So most of the collaboration uh, demonstrations, everything's happening as part of the CI workflow. And then if everything looks good, they would, they would merge this. So what are the uh, benefits for it is that uh, it's part of the uh, CI workflow, everything is happening as, as uh, much faster cycle time. Uh, collaborations happening with other developer, uh, developers on, on the pull requests. Uh, and it also provides a faster review cycle. Reviewers can simply see the environment, they can validate the changes, they can verify it, and if everything looks good, they would approve it. And in the end, this, uh, this results in a faster development cycle. Here we have a screenshot of the pull request comment of when a dev space environment is deployed. Uh, we provide the links. Uh, we provide the nitty-gritty details, such as kubectl commands, if they need to, if they need to look at it, look into it. We also provide a Slack channel uh, if they need to contact us if there's any issues or any feedback. So, we made the longer cycle time shorter uh, by bringing DevSpace into uh, deployments uh, per pull request. And, of and developers are really loving it. And we have the final uh, pain point of having uh, manual end-to-end -end tests. Developers in our organization, uh, even if they get a uh, unique DevSpace environment, they would still need to configure the environment, load the data, and run end-to-end -end tests. These uh, steps were toily, uh, they were manual, and uh, and they felt like there was a lot of pain points for that. And, so, and the developer experience team, we, since we already built uh, these workflows, these new workflows by bringing desk-based uh, deployments to pull requests, we wanted to address this by taking it a step further. So what we would do is, uh, once we deploy the desk-based environments for the pull requests, we automatically configure the environment uh, load the data, and run end-to-end -end tests as part of the CI workflow itself. So, uh, again, going with a developer, uh, they would clone, branch, uh, develop using DevSpace Dev, and they would uh, create a PR, 
and runs, this time they run a different command called slash e2e run. And this kicks off uh, uh, GitHub Actions that we created. And very similar to the previous approach, they would uh, deploy, uh, 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 it would create a unique dustbase environment and deploy services uh, onto that environment, configures the, envir uh, configures the environment with loading up data, uh, all the manual te tests are, manual steps are automated, and e 2 tests are run against that environment and provides the results back into the pull request. Uh, and again, we get a URL um, so that developers can test against that. Um, here, uh, same as before, repo slash dash hive, uh, PR number. And again, uh, developers can test it. They can, uh, uh, they can develop using DevSpace Dev and they can redeploy their changes uh, using the GitHub Actions. And this part would be considered a space deploy. So what are the main benefits? Well, they don't need to do any more manual end-to-end uh, -end test configuration. They would simply need to uh, kick off these GitHub Actions and that will automatically configure the environment and run e 2 tests against it. It also provides on-demand uh, testing capability. They can simply run the commands uh, on the pull request, and it'll automatically run it for them. And it also provides a gating mechanism to merge. If all the end-to-end -end tests passed, allow the pull request to merge. If not, don't bother. Or we can uh, add in more logic or implementation to that. Here we have a screenshot of uh, the commands, uh, slash ETV run, and then it provides the results saying which end-to-end -end tests passed and which ones failed and also provides a link to the uh, logs. So again, uh, we address the manual end-to-end -end, uh, tests and uh, it, it is solved by uh, adding in end-to-end -end tests as part of DeskBase deploy per PR. So how did we roll out? Uh, it, took, it took us a few quarters uh, with two engineers, myself included, and uh, it took us for proof of concept um, implementation, and we implemented it for each core service. After we implemented it, we created thorough documentation and uh, how to uh, and self how to guides how to get things started without the, without the developers depending on us. If they did needed some uh, help, uh, we did walkthroughs and discussions, and that way that also helped us learn about how they are interacting with the new workflows and we iteratively, iteratively improved upon them. And finally, we did presentations on our organization-wide meetings so that all the developers got to know about the new workflows. And we really cared about it as our, as our internal product, so everybody got to know about the new workflows and processes and, uh, and get you know, used to it. With that being said, we also had a few uh, uh, issues with our rollout. Some of the lessons we learned is one of them is since we de deployed a desk space or we implemented the new workflows ourselves, knowledge was siloed to our team. So if there were any issues, uh, the uh, developers, uh, they were dependent on us to solve the problems. And also there were issues where developers tried the new workflow, workflows and the new processes, some things didn't work and they went back to their own old ways. Uh, we weren't. We didn't. We didn't get to act on it proactively. We didn't get to know about if any issues happened. We didn't know about it without the uh, before the developers telling us. So, we resolved it using uh, a few few things. One of them, uh, we built monitors, uh, alerts, and we built visibility dashboards so that we would know the health of the system or the, the test space deployments or any of the processes before the developers. Uh, notify us so that we can be proactive in fixing them uh, and make sure the systems are stable and the workflows are working as intended. We also found DeskBase experts so that uh, developers who were uh, interested in it, they got to know about DeskBase and they, and they became experts and champions for uh, the specific teams. So they built custom workflows for their teams as well. And we also uh, got a lot of uh, support from uh, Loft Labs. Uh, if there are any issues, we, we, uh, we raised the questions or we raised the bugs to them and they were able to resolve as soon as possible. 
And if there was any issue, any questions regarding implementation, they were able to give us um, some um, tips and tricks. And reception was, since we rolled them out, uh, over 200 ephemeral environments have been kicked off. A lot less Google calendars uh, has been created. <laughs> um, developer experience improved, as well as code quality has improved as well. Uh, for the next steps, uh, we wanted to have a wider adoption. Uh, not all the developers are still using it, so we wanted to cover more developers using some of the develop most of the developers are using dust-based deployments, but some of them are still using their old ways of local setup. We wanted to get a wider uh, adoption. And finally, we also wanted to standardize these workflows, these processes across all the other services, not just the core services, but non-critical uh, other services and other namespaces as well. So the de de developer experience is standardized across our entire organization. So recapping, um, uh, we had all these issues with uh, shared development cluster, local environment setup, uh, and those uh, made, it, made the cycle times longer, uh, along with the manual end-to-end -end tests. And we were, we were able to address each and every single pain point using uh, our own way of implementing DeskBase Deploy and uh, DeskBase Dev and our ways of integrating as part of our CI workflow. And with that being said, uh, um, we ushered in an era of peace for our developers. <laughs> uh, thank you.